What if the universe is not following the script we thought it would? The standard model of cosmology, Lambda CDM, has been our guiding framework for decades, explaining dark matter, dark energy, and how galaxies grow. But then, Webb opened its golden eye. Suddenly, galaxies appeared too soon, too bright, too big, seemingly impossible. Are these cracks in our cosmic blueprint? Or are we standing on the edge of an even deeper truth about the universe? The James Webb Space Telescope didn't take long to shake things up. As soon as its golden mirrors opened to the cosmos, astronomers were hit with something they didn't expect. Galaxies so far, so bright, and so soon after the Big Bang that they seemed impossible. They were just so stupidly bright and they just stood out, said MIT astronomer Rohan Naidu, still astonished at what the early images revealed. One galaxy was confirmed to be shining only 330 million years after cosmic dawn, already dazzling in a universe barely out of its cradle. Others looked even larger and brighter, sprawling star cities when theory had insisted this shouldn't be possible yet. And the mystery that I told you about last time was that in these very first data, we were already able to find galaxies at record-breaking distances that were much more luminous and potentially much more massive uh, than all our models predicted. The questions came fast. How could stars have ignited in such hot clouds of gas so quickly? How could galaxies this massive have assembled in a matter of hundreds of millions of years? For decades, the reigning cosmological model, Lambda CDM, a mix of Einstein's relativity, cold dark matter and dark energy, had provided answers that matched almost everything we'd seen. Dark matter formed the scaffolding, normal matter followed, stars and galaxies bloomed, and dark energy stretched it all apart. But Webb's early galaxies looked like they were cheating the schedule, and whispers began. Was this the crack in cosmology everyone had been waiting for? The truth, though, hinged on proof. The first claims were based on photometry, measuring brightness and color, which can sometimes trick astronomers into thinking a dusty, closer galaxy is actually something ancient. The gold standard was spectroscopy, the ability to read the precise fingerprints of light. When JWST's Jade survey delivered those fingerprints in late 2022, it was unmistakable. The galaxies carried the telltale Lyman Brayach, redshifted by cosmic expansion, proving their light had traveled more than 13 billion years. On astronomy Slack channels, the excitement was electric. Oh my God, oh my God, we did it, wrote Kevin Hainlein of the University of Arizona. Brant Robertson compared it to catching a hummingbird's heartbeat, galaxies evolving 10 times faster than the Milky Way does today. The near-cam images uh, that we acquired with JWST, which are infrared images that can see very faint, distant galaxies that are extremely red, to try to identify those galaxies, measure their properties, and then also to use uh, near-spec, as Emma will tell you, to, uh, to confirm their distances and to learn more about their, their detailed properties. Some of these galaxies may even carry the fingerprints of Population 3 stars, the very first stars, born of pure hydrogen and helium, seeding the cosmos with the heavy elements needed for everything that came after. Webb, it seemed, was not tearing down cosmology, but bringing us closer to watching the universe build itself in real time. The story is just beginning. Future JWST surveys are already aimed at pushing even deeper, hunting for galaxies less than 300 million years after the Big Bang. Each confirmation will sharpen the timeline of cosmic history, forcing us to decide whether Lambda CDM holds its ground, or whether something deeper, something about dark energy, the expansion rate, or the early universe itself, needs rewriting. The telescope may even weigh in on the infamous Hubble tension, the ongoing mystery of why today's expansion rate doesn't quite match predictions. For now, astronomers remain cautious. Carl Sagan's warning echoes. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. But one thing is already certain. Webb has changed the game. It has forced cosmologists to confront their assumptions to run new simulations and to imagine new possibilities. As Mike Boylan-Colchin put it, these are the best kinds of problems, 
because no matter which way the answers fall, they'll reshape how we understand the universe itself. One group of discoveries came from Webb's Fresco program, which spotted three enormous galaxies from within the first billion years after the Big Bang. Each one is nearly the size of the Milky Way, already packed with stars and glowing red in Webb's images. So much so that astronomers nicknamed them the Red Monsters. Unlike most galaxies, which only manage to turn about 20% of their gas into stars, these beasts seem to be converting nearly all of it. Our findings are reshaping our understanding of galaxy formation in the early universe, said Dr. Meng Yuan Xiao of the University of Geneva, who led the study. But Webb didn't stop there. In 2024, its JD's survey confirmed the earliest known galaxy ever seen, JD's GSZ 14-0. which existed just 290 million years after the Big Bang. That's only about 2% of the universe's current age. And it wasn't some faint little smudge. It stretched 1,700 light years across, contained half a billion suns worth of mass, and was pumping out 20 new stars every year. Right beside it, another galaxy, JADES, GSZ-14-1 appeared only a few million years younger, still massive and still blazing. Webb is showing that galaxies in the early universe were much more luminous than we had anticipated, said astrophysicist Francesco De Eugenio. By mid-2025, Webb set another record. A team led by Rohan Naidu found MOMZ-14, the most distant galaxy known to date, shining from only 280 million years after the Big Bang. It was compact but brilliant, with a mass similar to the small Magellanic Cloud and spewing out radiation into a universe that was still half filled with neutral gas. The discovery left astronomers stunned, once again asking, how did something so big, so soon, even form? The problem is that our standard model of cosmology, called Lambda CDM, doesn't predict this. According to it, galaxies should grow slowly, starting from small dark matter halos that merge and collect gas over billions of years. The Milky Way, for example, took cosmic ages to become what it is. Yet Webb's galaxies look like they skipped all the steps and jumped straight to maturity. There are a few possible explanations. Maybe early galaxies were hyper-efficient at making stars, converting half or even all their gas before feedback could slow them down. Maybe dark matter halos formed faster than expected, letting them trap and hold more gas. Or maybe the stars themselves were different, bigger, brighter and shorter lived than the ones we see today. Some scientists even wonder if we need new physics, like different types of dark matter or alternative ways galaxies could collapse together. And of course, there's always the chance that the observations are tricking us. Distances could be overestimated, dust could be exaggerating brightness, or hidden black holes could be adding extra light. Even so, many of these galaxies hold up under closer inspection, and their sheer size remains a puzzle. The truth might be that galaxy formation in the early universe was far more intense and chaotic than we ever imagined. Fast, violent and efficient in ways our models don't fully capture. Upcoming observations with Webb and ALMA will keep testing these ideas. But no matter how the details shake out, one thing is already clear. The early universe wasn't quiet, gentle or slow. It was bold, messy and full of surprises. The red monsters, the Jades finds, and Momsey 14 are more than just records. They're reminders that cosmic dawn still holds mysteries and Webb is only beginning to reveal how strange and unexpected the birth of galaxies really was. What we call the observable universe is really just a horizon carved out by time. Light, or any other signal, only travels so fast and the cosmos has only been expanding for so long. That sets a limit, the furthest reach from which anything could have possibly touched us since the beginning. Right now, with the universe's age and growth factored in, that distance works out to about 46.5 billion light-years in radius. 
Every observer, no matter where they are, gets their own sphere like this, centered on themselves. Observable isn't about how good our telescopes are, it's about what physics allows. Here's the strange twist. The universe is accelerating. That means much of what we see now will eventually slip out of reach, stretched redder and dimmer until it fades away forever. Some regions are already lost to us in principle. Light leaving them today will never, no matter how long we wait, make it here. It's as if parts of the cosmos are drifting over a horizon that always recedes faster than we can follow. People sometimes confuse this with the Hubble sphere. That's the distance where galaxies right now are receding from us at the speed of light because of expansion. It's not a wall, it grows with time. Photons that were once stranded beyond it can still cross back in as the sphere expands. In fact, many of the galaxies we see today were moving away faster than light when they first emitted the photons we're catching now. The trick is that the universe's changing expansion rate let those photons sneak through, so cosmology gives us a set of boundaries. The Hubble sphere tells us where recession speed matches light speed. The particle horizon tells us how far light has traveled to us since the Big Bang. The event horizon says what light emitted today will never reach us and our past light cone defines everything that has ever influenced us. These sound abstract, but they're all ways of pinning down the same thing, causality in an expanding universe. If you imagine the universe as a closed shape, like a three-dimensional sphere, you might wonder whether you could fly straight and come back around. Expansion complicates that. Beyond a certain distance, space grows faster than you can ever close the gap, even at near light speed. In our accelerated universe, there are places that not even light can reach, no matter how long it travels. So the clean way to see it is this. The observable universe is just a part of the cosmos that's had time to say hello. The Hubble sphere is a speed marker, not a fence. Expansion and recession are stories layered on top of measurements. And when you peel away the confusion, the picture that remains is simple. The universe is vast, it's still accelerating and a lot of what's out there will always remain just beyond our touch. 